Andrew Moyer is gonna come up and share his story with us, so please welcome Andrew to the stage. Here you go, brother. Good morning, church family. Oops. Fix this. I'm going to have to read most of this uh, to make sure and get it done in 10 minutes. Uh, on, after 14 rewrites, I finally got it down to about 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So, For those who don't know me, my name is Andrew. Uh, I was born and raised in Portland, Oregon, to the best parents you could ever ask for. To this day, always supporting me and loving me unconditionally. As a child, I had uh, one older brother and a younger sister who was adopted out of foster care. I grew up going to, a, going to a Christian church and learned all the major Bible stories taught in Sunday school. Nothing as good as the quester, however. I always believed in God and Jesus, but never knew what having a relationship with them was like. Around sixth grade, I'm guessing, my parents left our church due to a scandal involving the pastor at the time. After that, we generally only went to services on Christmas and Easter, and occasionally we'd try out a new church to see if we liked it. My parents eventually found a home church, but not till after I graduated high school. When my sister was in the eighth grade, uh, she ran away from home, only returning for short visits after that. Over the next 20 years, she struggled with addiction and other issues. My parents always loved her unconditionally. In high school, I joined the Oregon State Police Explore Scout program. It was for kids interested in having a police career. I trained with them and went on ride-alongs with state troopers. I fell in love with this path and ended up spending the next 28 years involved in law enforcement. At the age of 17, while riding with a state trooper, I saw my first fatal car crash. As I walked up to the car, I saw a firefighter standing on a dead body in the front seat extracting someone else in the back seat who was screaming for his life. Uh, he died minutes later. Also at 17, my best friend at the time, a fellow Explorer Scout, was shot while on a ride along. Luckily, he survived. Over the next decade and a half, I would continue to work as a state trooper. One experience that had a major impact was chasing down a bank robber. I was with another state trooper chasing him through a dark wooded area when he shot at us. We were unable to shoot back as we couldn't see him and there was houses on the other side. He escaped and the next day he shot and killed a retired deputy. I felt guilty for not catching him and that guilt didn't leave me for years. In 2009, I left the state police to become a supervisor with the sheriff's office. Our goal was to rebuild a struggling agency. In January of 2011, my friend, a chief for a local police department was shot and killed. I was the incident commander for that scene and the initial investigation. Suicides. I can't begin to count the number of suicides I responded to. One time three in one shift. But the worst were teenage suicides. One was a 16-year-old girl who was babysitting her younger siblings while her parents were out celebrating their wedding anniversary. After writing a 27-page long suicide note, she went into her parents' bed and put a shotgun to her head. Not knowing where her parents were, my deputies and I cleaned up as much as we could before waiting for them to come home and give them the horrible news. Death notifications were equally bad than seeing someone die. We tried to always do them in person rather than over the phone. One day I took a call of an out-of-state death notification from San Diego, California. They were looking for next of kin who lived in my county. And when he said the person's name, I paused for a moment, it was my sister. Uh, I then made the drive to my parents' house to give the most difficult death notification uh, I've ever given. Rewind a little bit, in the early 2000s, I got married and had my son Wyatt and my daughter Grace. Later in the midst of my career, my marriage became an ongoing struggle. After years of mostly sleeping in separate bedrooms and going through three different marriage counselors, we mutually decided to divorce. 
While married, I was the parent who would get my kids ready in the mornings, make them breakfast, walk them to school, and go to all their practices and immerse in their daily lives. After the divorce, they lived an hour away from me, and I only got to see them every other weekend, most for the most part. This destroyed my soul. Over the next three years, I would start a downward spiral. However, I didn't see it, recognize it, or understand it at the time. After separating from my wife, still going through the divorce process, I entered into a relationship based on lust. The relationship would last the next several years. I thought it was what I needed. I thought it would fill my emptiness. For a while, it felt like it did. But it was a destructive relationship for the most part. She would cheat on me, and I would return the favor mostly with emotional affairs. While we didn't just break up is beyond me, but we continued the cycle of hurting each other over and over. This sinful relationship also put a giant strain on my relationship with my kids. One of these relationships, while not a physical affair, involved a texting of a sexual nature with a reserve deputy who was under my chain of command. Two years later, during a divided political issue at the county, I found myself on opposite sides of this person, who then filed a sexual harassment claim against me. Although most of the allegations against me were false, I admitted to the affair, which was against policy and was just plain wrong. I was demoted to the rank of sergeant, but this didn't please certain members of the county that I was not fired, and over the next year, I spent in on and off again investigations. I was full of guilt and shame, and had put my family and my coworkers through enough, and realized it was never going to stop until they could fire me. I turned in my resignation and ended my career. Towards the end of my career, I became bitter at the world, seeing so much evil and horrible things, it was hard for me to believe good even existed, including myself. I would constantly be angry and short-tempered, although I didn't see it at the time. I mostly took it out on close friends and family. A couple people even suggested that I seek counseling, but I denied I needed help, until one day my daughter, I think around 13 at the time, looked me straight in the eye and said, Dad, is all you do is yell, you're always mad. That hit different, and it was what I needed to finally get help. I went to a therapist who explained that I had cum cumulative PTSD, which is caused from experiencing bad things over and over again over the course of a time. She provided therapy, which was, in, which was amazing, and definitely helped me cope with the trauma I had experienced on the job. Therapy helped a lot with my anger and yelling, but after my resignation, I steeped into a deep depression. I was full of guilt and shame. I let so many people down. I felt alone and had a heart of stone. I remember a couple times holding my gun in my hand, thinking I could just end it all right now. Both times, I thought about the pain that families had when I notified them of their loved ones who committed suicide. I couldn't do that to my kids or my parents. I remember during that time praying every day and asking God to just take me away. Any way he wished, just take me off this earth. Around this time, I got invited to a friend's church. I declined the first couple times uh, I think on the third time is when I decided, I'd, okay, I'll go. It immediately had a positive impact, and I started attending regularly. This church used the Bible app, and so I downloaded it on my phone, but I only opened it on Sundays. I was still battling depression, and one evening while alone, I decided I had enough. I began walking towards the highway. I don't remember having a specific plan, maybe walking out into traffic when I got there, but God had other plans. About a half mile from my house, I felt this urge to open the Bible app on my phone. 
I have no idea to this day what book or chapter I was reading, but I sat there on the side of the road reading the Bible for several minutes until I got up and walked home. That started me on a journey which led to my relationship with Jesus. More than a Sunday morning sermon, but a daily relationship. Of course, shortly after that, churches shut down due to COVID. But it didn't stop me. I found several online churches to watch and continue daily studies and plans in the Bible app. It took a while. Definitely didn't happen overnight. A lot of prayer and a lot of repentance. But slowly, all that anger and hate and bitterness and guilt and shame slowly started leaving my mind and heart. It was replaced with God's word in my mind and Jesus' love in my heart. In late 2020, I moved to Ashland looking for a church. On Facebook, I came across the story. I watched a few sermons online and started attending after the in-person services started up again. In the spring of 2021, I finished my uh, first complete read through the Bible, and on Easter of that year was baptized by Zav. Well, at the story, I met my girlfriend, Maya. Although we started out as just friends, we started dating almost a year ago. It has been amazing to be in a relationship with another Jesus follower, a first for both of us. Agreeing to put Jesus first as individuals and as a couple and letting God guide us has been so rewarding. I love studying God's word with her and praying together is the absolute best. I have also, uh, I start out sitting in the back and not wanting any uh, communication with anyone here, uh, but God had other plans. God know, knew that I needed uh, community, even though I didn't want it. Um, so about a year ago, I was invited to the Psalmsters, and that has been an amazing experience for me. Providing me with so much love and joy and spiritual growth, it's been amazing. Since moving down to Southern Oregon, I have met so many great people and friends who have taken care of me. My daily relationship with Jesus has helped my relationship with my kids, even though they don't know him yet. It is my hope and prayer that someday they too will feel the love that Jesus has for them. Thank you. If you guys would just extend your hands this way, we just want to pray a blessing over Andrew. God, we thank you that you as well are not a God who is removed from pain and suffering and hardship, the the complete brokenness in this world, Christ, that you stepped down into it, that you witnessed it with your eyes. And more than any of that, God, you you actually took it upon yourself willingly. And God, for everything that Andrew has been through, thank you that you know. Thank you that you care. Thank you that you've been there for him through it, even when he didn't realize it. And God, we just praise you for that. We praise you that you're a God who just meets us in your perfect timing, right when we need that. That moment when he was walking down the street and thought it was over for him, that your living word just gripped his heart and the gospel, and the power of Jesus, and the resurrection, God, you gave him resurrection life that day, and so we just thank you for that, God, and thank you for these past three or four years as he's been here at the story for just the continual growth, the continual maturity uh, that you're doing in his life, God. Thank you for bringing a group of people around him uh, to encourage him, to challenge him as iron sharpens iron, that he's, he's continuing, God, to just grow closer to you day by day. And we do just lift up as well, God, his, his kids and his family, those who don't know you yet. Thank you for the power of Andrew's testimony, God. It, it truly shows there's nobody who is too far from your love. And so I pray that you would use Andrew first and foremost, God, just as an agent, as an ambassador of the kingdom, uh, to just share your love with his kids. And we just pray for their salvation as well. 
And for this season of his life that he's in right now, continue to bless him, give him guidance and direction, that you would just make straight the path before him, that you would open the doors for him that you have for his future, and that you would continue to use his life for your glory. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, Amen. love you, bro, thank you.